of Enoch is interesting, wait until you hear the Book of Giants. The Book of Giants was discovered in 1947 in the Dead Sea Scrolls discovery. The manuscript is dated to the 2nd century BC at the earliest, but could be much older. The same narratives as mentioned in the Book of Enoch are the fallen angels, their corruption of mankind, and their destruction through the flood of Noah is mentioned all throughout the Book of Giants. The scroll was found deteriorating, leaving only fragments of text, but the pieces of text we do have hold incredible information. The Book of Giants describes in great detail the fallen angels corrupting the genetics of all flesh that was on the earth. It tells us specifically in one of the fragments, fragment 1Q23 1 plus 6, 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of the flock, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, were selected for miscegenation. Miscegenation refers to the mixing of races or species, particularly in the context of sexual intercourse. The there we go. So, um, first of all, I want to make this easy to see. That in the last days, all right, knowing this first, all right, don't know the second or third. Know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. From every animal, from every bird, were selected for miscegenation. Miscegenation refers to the mixing of races or species, particularly in the context of sexual intercourse. Particularly in the context of sexual intercourse intercourse walking after their own lust now you've heard me talk about being able to connect the dots all right so let's connect the dot here with second peter 3 verse 3 knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and it course this guy this kid talking about sexual intercourse and relating it to the Bible that's a red flag the title book of Giants part 1 parallels the Bible's book of Enoch now if you've never even seen a Bible let alone read it then you might get fooled by this but I'm telling you, if you take a look at the Bible, you'll see for yourself there is no book of Enoch. The Bible does not have a book of Enoch. If it did, then that Bible would be wrong. <clears throat> now, I explained this yesterday that Enoch died before the flood. All right, we see that here in verse 24. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. It was after the flood in, oops, in Genesis 11 where God confounded the language. All right, let's see verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. That means that original language that was spoken before the flood was no longer spoken after God confounded the language. All right. Therefore, any book that Enoch would have had would not be understood after God confounded the language. So the Bible does not have a book of Enoch. It could not have a book of Enoch. Enoch did not live after God confounded the language. Very simple stuff. All right. So these guys are taking advantage of people that never read the Bible and it they're giving the appearance that you'll have special secret knowledge if you just base I guess listen to them because there ain't no way in H E double hockey sticks that I can understand any of this stuff right there. You tell me I can't know what God says because I can't read this gobbledygook 
Are you kidding me? That's not... That's not the secret. That's not the key to understanding the Word of God. If you want special insight knowledge, the secret, the key, is faith. Alright? And we can prove that with the Bible. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart because they do not have faith. Nevertheless, and this this parallels many verses in the Old Testament as well. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when it shall have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil shall be taken away. Now you can see. Now you can see and understand the Word of God. You're not getting special insight by this having these phony manuscripts, these cunningly devised fables, cunningly devised fables. And that, that's exactly what it is. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is phony baloney stuff. And not only that, you don't you don't know what that says and the, this kid that's reading it he don't know what it says he's just going off of what somebody told him it said right so and these are what all, the word of God was buried for thousands of years hidden from all of humanity for thousands of years and now all of a sudden it pops up in 2022 and now we got the secrets of you know comic book heroes I mean, come on, man. All right, let's let's look at another example. First of all, I'm going to be fair about this, so hold on. Ralph Glidden has a rather interesting story to tell, a story which he continued to tell from the grave. While digging on Catalina Island in the Gulf of California between 1919 and 1928, he found, according to him and numerous newspaper articles from the time, numerous skeletons. But what made his claims particularly interesting, however, was the claim that their average height was around seven to nine feet. All right, so that's interesting because that actually rings true. So we go, we look at um, Goliath, for example. And we'll do it this way because I don't remember the verse. First Samuel 17, verse four, and there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. Six cubits being about nine feet in a span, in my opinion, about a foot. So I think it's fair to say Goliath was ten feet, and being a champion most likely was of the tallest of the giants. So about ten feet rings true. Other giants being seven to nine feet rings true. The question arrived at by all those who have heavily researched his story is, where are these skeletons today? Could it really have just been a publicity stunt? Or did Glidden actually somehow find the remains of a lost race of giants? Santa Catalina Island, also just known as Catalina Island, is one of the Channel Islands off the coast of California in USA. The Channel Islands holds the title as the location of the earliest evidence for seafaring in the Americas, and also the earliest evidence of humans in North America. Ralph Glidden, who worked on the islands for several decades, was an amateur archaeologist who successfully uncovered ancient burial sites on Catalina Island. From 1919 to 1928, it is said that he excavated more than 800 grave sites from about 100 individual locations around the island. In addition to finding thousands of artifacts, he also stated that he dug up almost 4,000 human skeletons, a claim which has often received a lot of negative attention, many claiming he lacked respect for the dead. How All right, so that, that's interesting. I don't know why uh, this would be a problem, um, but regardless. However, his reasoning was quite profound. He 
claim that there once lived an advanced ancient race of tall, fair-haired Indians on Catalina Island and the adjacent islands. With the male adults around seven feet in height, Glidden lost his sponsor after digging for almost ten years, and the general opinion today is that he was just bluffing about finding giant skeletons, with the motive of creating interest and making money. However, he never made much money from his finds and received little financial attention. Additionally, Ralph Glidden was not the first to find a giant skeleton on Catalina Island. According to Pittsburgh Press, July 20, 1913, and also the Daily Telegraph on July 26, a German naturalist named Dr. A.W. Furstenon uncovered an eight-foot skeleton on the island. The skeleton was found with artifacts, such as mortars, pestles, and arrowheads, all different from the ordinary Indian burials, plus a strange flat stone bearing unknown symbols. Furstenan had, while in Mexico, heard the legend regarding the noble race of giants that... Okay, so this is not really saying anything at all. I I thought maybe they would talk about six-fingered giants, and there are people born today with six fingers and six toes. That's not anything unusual, and then of course um, we can find evidence of that here also. Um, and there was a and there was yet a battle in Gath where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty four number, and he also was born to the giant. All right, so that's repeated in First Chronicles twenty. All right, so. I don't know if there's anything more. There was one thing I wanted to add to this. I don't know if I can True story. With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giant's graves and indeed the Naraj's, we find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giant's graves, highly compelling. In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many so, one of a now long <clears throat> this here is 18 feet that's ridiculous all right 12 feet i think is fair but this one right here yeah it's ridiculous all right um, completely fabricated made up in my opinion a lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants surprisingly however recently although china is seen as an infamously secretive country with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions, rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored. All right, so I don't know. And who actually owns farmland on the island of Sardin. Founding the claimed discovery site are indeed the aforementioned and gigantic... ...during the Neurogic Age, between 1900 and 7... ...the town center are tethered and controlled by the Isoadores as they go. Were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Were they utilized for their strength and size by these Isoadores to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins, a true story? With the vi an extremely ancient ritual still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time. Okay, so that's, that, that's a ridiculous claim, predicting, or pre, what do you say? This within Sardinia, predating Christianity. Predating Christianity, so... Christianity has always been from the beginning of the world. So, was this before the heaven and the earth was made? Now, you want to, you could make the argument, well, Christianity didn't come about until Jesus was born. Okay, that's fine. Christianity, by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giants' graves. A carnival so old the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, 
these monsters march through the local town, controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts named the Izohadores, known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas. What exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Izohadores as they go, were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Yeah, here we go. So, it's that's like asking, well, maybe a Superman, Batman, and Bozo the Clown were once real creatures. Now, is that possible? Nation. The Sejanation referrals makes it absolutely clear that this wasn't referring to different species. Actual cross-species genetics involved the seed of the fallen angels themselves yeah. it's important to notice that giants and monsters are referred to in unique distinct yeah. reference so the the suggestion is that these were real creatures at one time just like Superman was a real creature Batman was a real creature and Bozo the Clown was a real creature. We know from Genesis 6 4 that when humans and angels made it together that the offspring they we know it, that again we know that by reading Genesis 6, the angels did not mate with anybody. Right? <laughs> All you have to do is read it for yourself. Uh, and again, these are these are people, little kids, taking advantage of people that do not read their Bible. All right, first of all, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. And let me go back to the comment section here. Um, Alex M.E.S., he says, I found by reading an ancient text taken from Malos Mamalufikon, sons of God means the sons of Seth and not the incubi devils, just like the daughters of men means the descendants of Cain. Uh, so that's absolutely incorrect. And that's why you should not be fooled by all these false teachers. Just believe what the Bible says. It's very simple. All right. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. All right. So let's break this down. The men here in verse 1 is referring to the sons of God in verse 2. And the daughters that were born to them are referring to daughters of men in verse 2. All right, so the daughters belong to the, their dad until their dad gives them to another man in marriage. All right, and this is evident all throughout the Bible and in our culture even today. All right, so we see, I, I like to point to... Uh, the New Testament here for in the new for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven did you notice that for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage and what's that mean to be given in marriage that means for your dad to give you to a man to be married uh, if you're a woman all right if you're a man you marry a woman if you're a woman, your dad gives you in marriage to a man. All right. And um, that ensures protection all the time, essentially. But that's the tradition. That's what the meaning of Genesis 6 is when it says the daughters of men, the daughters of their dad, and when they are given in marriage, they are given to a man. The problem here in verses 1 and 2 is that these men were not just taking one wife, they were taking wives of all which they chose. That's a problem, okay? Creates all kinds of problems, created all kinds of problems on the earth. And it's interesting, the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, all right? I mean, that right there seals it. That right there seals it. He's not having a problem with your fantasy of angels 
having sex with women. All right. The problem is with man. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Right? And then, of course, there were giants born in those days, adding to the problem that was on the earth. So you got giant men taking wives of all which they chose as well. The giants are men. There should be no mistake in that. And that the giants weren't they weren't the problem. The pro the problem was the heart. All right. And that's that's uh highlighted if you will here in Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart. That was the problem then, and that is the problem today. Alright, just like what we read in when Jesus is explaining that if you wash your hands that does not make you clean or unclean it's what proceeds out of the mouth that comes from the heart that defiles the man all right this is not a new thing this is this was a problem then it's a problem today and it repented the lord that he had made man noticing it it repented the lord that he made man not angels there is no mention of angels. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the heart. All right. This mention of giants is just to give us an idea of the scenario going on on earth when you had all this wickedness dominating the earth and there was no hope for it. So God said, let's destroy it and rebuild it. Uh, he found grace with Noah and um, of course we can go to what is it Hebrews 10 Hebrews 11 of course and by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen yet as of yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith you talk about why was Noah uh, why did um, why did God find grace with Noah Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations it's because he had faith and he had faith that's why not because of genetics none of this is about genetics not one single thing so you don't have to worry about angels coming down and having sex with your wife or your daughter or even you your whole family your whole entire family your dog cat and all that sort of stuff that's not happening angels don't have sex and just like what we read here in Matthew oh if I can find it now did I Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way here. For in the resurrection in Matthew 22, uh, in the, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Uh, so angels don't have sex. They don't get married. They do not are not given in marriage. None of that is happening. They are not having sex. They weren't having sex here. They're not having sex now. And again, what did I point out earlier? Knowing this first, in the last days there shall be scoffers walking after their own lusts. Exactly what we're seeing. Exactly. Because they watch a lot of Cinemax and HBO and they think everybody's having sex with everybody. That everything's having sex with everything. They're all their thoughts all their imaginations everything in their heart is geared toward this idea of sex 
every imagination of the thoughts of their hearts are only evil continually and that's exactly what we're seeing today people building doctrines off of this idea of sex so also and with the, this idea of angels having sex and not only that they are claiming that the sons of God are fallen angels you could not be more offensive because we are the sons of God according to the Bible beloved now are we the sons of God we are sons of God and these devils are claiming sons of God are fallen angels think about that I mean, what kind of doctrine is that it's wicked it's pure wickedness and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually let's do this here just um, out of curiosity how long right there who are the sons of God and did they have sex with women and produced children <laughs> obsessed with sex man it's unbelievable isn't it all right where is the kingdom can a Christian run down da, 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 da. all right so this is not so bad the sons of God and the death angels um, right there who are the sons of God and did they have sex that must be the same guy huh just loves talking about sex 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 walking after their own lust all right so back to the this idea the sons of Seth okay <clears throat> all right so if we go let's do it this way all right who was Seth and Adam knew his wife again and she bare a son and called his name Seth so Seth is the son of Adam right and then we can go here just to build some drama to this here go it this way and there's a genealogy given in Luke chapter 3 which was the son of Seth which was the son of Adam which was the son of God so sons of God in Genesis 6 without question were the sons of Adam Adam being the first son of God All right, that's in a physical sense Jesus being the Son of God from heaven and being therefore in a spiritual sense so now we got the spirit in us which they did not have back in the days of Adam all right it's very simple and then of course what was the other part of that the daughters of men means the descendants of Cain and that's not true either the first of all well let's do it this way how do we do it and after he had begotten Seth he begat sons and daughters so Adam had daughters but so the daughters of men are, are the daughters of men going all the way back to starting with Adam and Eve and Eve is the mother of all living there's not a different humanoid race man he has made all nations of one blood this is simple stuff man and you, <laughs> you got all these people walking after their own lust 
coming up with these doctrines of devils that are not good for you at all. They distort the reality in the Word of God. And if you being born of God, don't you put the truth above everything else? And this is not a political game where majority rules. The truth is the truth. It's not subjective at all. We don't determine what the truth is. Now you either desire the truth or you don't. Right? And we that worship the Father Oops, let's do it this way because I want to simplify it a little bit. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. Alright, so you think you can persuade people and change the truth? No, you can't. That's what politicians do. We see that all the time among the unbelieving heathen. They think they can change the truth by arguing in favor of one particular worldview over another, regardless of what the truth is. Right? We that are born of God, we desire the truth above all else, even our own selves. All right. So, anyways, that's enough of that. I just I enjoy uh, these comments so that we can sharpen our knowledge of the Word of God. It helps, and then of course, um, you know, for whatever reason, I like to examine these different uh, videos that are ridiculous. It's just, I guess, a sick obsession, but it helps me to reaffirm and strengthen my own belief and challenges me to use the Bible to prove what is true and what is not. Okay?